Good evening and welcome. And tonight we're going to start looking at chapter 20, uh, entitled Verbal Roots, Patterns 2 through 4. And one of the main things we'll be looking at is liquid futures, which uh, it's not really that difficult, but it's a little strange. So once we get there, we'll talk about that. Um, Let's open our textbooks to page 209. I'll leave the um, exegetical insight for you to read on your own. But in this chapter, we will learn that some verbal roots are altered in the formation of their present tense stem, but that, but that alteration does not necessarily affect the other tense stems. And also we'll learn liquid futures. Now he had a little... Uh, uh, statement in the previous chapter that uh, said to the effect that the uh, present tense uh, stem is the one that's most altered. Uh, the root is uh, what's what pertains to uh, the whole verb system, but the stem is the form it takes in a certain tense. And the present tense stem is the most altered form. I can't remember where he said that, but it's in chapter 19. <laughs> uh, somebody want to read here for a little bit, uh, starting 20.1? Sure. Happy to read. <clears throat> pattern 1. In the previous chapter, you learned how pattern 1 roots are not altered in the formation of their present tense stem which means the present and future tense stems are identical. And the example he gave was Luo. Uh, Luo is very consistent. It doesn't change its form uh, from the root to the stem in any tense. So that's, that's why you see that in most of the paradigms. This includes stems ending in Yoda or Upsilon, Upsilon such as Aku becomes Akuo and Aku Oso. Aku Oso. Mm -hmm. Stems ending in a stop, such as uh, Blep, or which becomes Blepo and Blepo. Blepso. Uh, Blepso, I'm sorry. Yeah. Blepso. And contract verbs <clears throat> Agapa, uh, Agapa O, Agapa O, and Agapeo. I got peso. So yeah. I got peso. Um, and then the uh, before you go again. on, I, I mm -hmm. want to point one thing out yeah. here. Uh, th the first example, a kuo, a ku stem, and, and his asterisk there indicates that's the stem. Right. It's also the root mm -hmm. uh, in this particular one because the present tense stem did not change from the root. Akuo is the present, present tense. tense. Akuso is, is the future tense. Yes. Yes. Blep is a stem for this one. Blepo, present tense, and blepso, it's the combination of P plus sigma, which mm -hmm. becomes a psi, which is easy enough to see. And then the contract verb, uh, agapa, uh, agapao is the present tense. Uh, stem and it's the same as the root uh, and then agapeso do you remember that with contract verbs when they add the sigma tense formative it causes the uh, contract vowel to, to lengthen. lengthen from alpha to eta in this case that's just review from last chapter thank you uh, 20.2, Patterns 2 through 4. In this chapter, you will learn about verbs whose roots are altered in the formation of their present tense stem. Hence, the present and future tense stems will be different, um, such as uh, bal, we, uh, which has uh, for present tense balo, which with two uh, lambdas, mm -hmm. and future tense is balo with a single lambda and an accent mark over the Omega. Right. So the root then is ball with one lambda, 
the present temp stem, present temp stem is ball with two lambdas. Yes. Remember the root is the basic form of the verb. The stem is the basic form of the verb in a certain tense. Footnote. Footnote. Stem does not include the tense formative or argument. Augment. Augment. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Augment. You will learn about augments in the next chapter. Yeah, that's chapter 21 for the imperfect tense. Okay. Um, okay, I think the diagram just kind of shows mm -hmm. us what he just yeah. went over. 20.3. This can be one of the easiest chapters in beginning uh, basic. So is this basically PBG. beginning Greek? Yeah, PBG, basics, of biblical, basics Greek. of biblical Greek. If you do one thing, memorize the root with every present tense form. Okay, I want to stop here. This is one of the reasons I gave you this color-coded sheet here, because I want us to get very familiar with the present tense stem and the root of these verbs. Uh, and this is more than the verbs that we've learned up to this point. This is for the whole book. Okay. But uh, everything up through chapter 20 is what we have or will have learned by the end of Carl, um, since you were wonderful to hand this to us, can, can you tell us what the color meant on this? Okay, and uh, last page, yellow highlighting, Oh, I mean, yes. contract verbs and see uh, agapao is an alpha contract. Yes. Iteo is an epsilon contract. We haven't learned that yet till chapter 25. Uh, Akutheo, well, we'll learn that in chapter 21. Genao, we learned that last chapter. Okay. Uh, and these and, are the liquids. No, uh, contracts. No, the green is the liquid. Oh, right? yes. Yeah. Right. Green is liquid, but okay. Did let's you start wait. the recording? Yes. Oh, okay. Sorry. Yeah. I believe. So, yeah. Here we go. The difference between contract verbs and liquid future verbs is going to be very important because you'll be tempted to get them mixed up. But uh, if you learned the vocabulary for those contract verbs, which were presented chapter 19 uh that's one way to keep from getting mixed up the best way okay the root and the present tense stem may be different but in most cases the root will be the same or similar to the other tense stems Remember, all tense stems are formed from their root, and the present tense stem is the most altered of all these tense stems. There it is. That's the statement I was looking for. If you don't do this, you will become confused and potentially discouraged since you will have to memorize hundreds of irregular forms. Uh, footnote two. Most grammars describe these changes in a verb like balo as saying that the future tense stem has lost a lambda, which is simply wrong. The present tense stem is never altered uh, to form another tense stem. Okay. The root is formed, is altered to form a present tense stem. Right. It's backwards. Yeah. yeah. And um, it's a distinction that perhaps we'll appreciate more later. That's true. <laughs> that is true. For us, it's hard to know, understand that yet. I think when we get to... Um, the aorist tense. Sure. We'll see a lot of verbs who have that have a different root in the aorist than they do in the present. So I've read this and, and he, he shows some examples we're going to get to of where there are different roots. Yeah. And, and that's not surprising. Even in the English, we have the one that comes to mind is go and went. That's right. Completely different. I'm glad you said that because I was going to say something like that too. <laughs> but, but in that case, um, so the question I have is, are there forms where there are more than two roots? Yes. Okay, so it's not just the present root that might be different. Right. Not too many, but... Um, well, like to be, certainly, I think is like that. It, yeah, but there are, uh, I think, phagamai is I eat. Uh, no, es, estheo is I eat. 
Uh, maybe I got it. it. That's okay. You don't have it's to. It's listed in this. Uh, all right. In the in the appendix, they've got this very handy list of all the verbs in this book, tense forms of verbs occurring fifty yeah, times that, or more. Yeah, that's fine. I did. Yeah. That's a quick answer. That's okay. It, but the general form he's presenting here is this really the situation that most of the verbs are such that if they have a different a different uh, root root. It'll be different. for the present as opposed to the other tenses. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. There are six basic tense forms, and uh, most of the verbs that we'll be learning in this book have a very similar uh, stem if it's altered from the root. Uh, it's going to be very similar to uh, the root. Okay. But there are a few that are very different. Right. And he's presenting a few of them here tonight. So. Um, th and this is very helpful, I presume, when we're dealing with like finding the lexical form of a verb because exactly. the lexical form is present, but we're going to be presented with other tense tenses where it looks quite different. That's right. And that's why he wants us to memorize the present tense and the root because yes. then we can marry up what we're saying yeah. to a lexical. I can mm -hmm. see that. You know, if you look at an English dictionary, you will find the word go and you'll find the the word went they'll both be in there mm -hmm. and i would think there must be lexicons i mean i know there's the one that i found which is really exhaustive but i would think that there would be some others as well where they would show you the form so you could find it when it does change so much that it would might become unrecognizable mm -hmm. well here's a so book it's probably important to pick out a lexicon that's helpful mm -hmm. sure right yes that will this lexicon, which I think you have, yes, that's the one I have. It's really this will awesome. tell you all the different different. Right. Uh, but it won't tell me the Septuagint. No, no, yeah. Septuagint so. has a larger vocabulary. Than, right. Yeah. <laughs> I've got <laughs> um, I've got some lexicons for the Septuagint. Yeah. But here's a handy resource that you might want sometime to get. This is an exhaustive concordance to the Greek New Testament. And if you look at, for instance, um, well, what's one of these? Uh, yeah, horao. Is that a verb that we've uh, learned already? I think it is, horao. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you will find so many that look so very much different. Uh, and this will list every occurrence of every. That, uh, of, what was the title of that? Um, it's called the Exhaustive Concordance oh, to the Greek New Testament. And, and, um, and uh, who's the author? Or how John you... John Kohlenberger is one of them. Okay. Uh, Kohlenberger, Goodrich, and, and Swanson. C O. That's K O. K O H L E N B E R G E R. Okay, thank you. Um, and, and you're saying each entry, um, it, it contains the various forms? Yes. All the, um, let me show you there, just an example. In one entry. Oh, that's really helpful. Yeah. Here's for all. It's a very common verb. There's a lot, a lot of, uh, occurs 449 times in the New Testament. But look at this. It's got, uh, Aden is one form of it. Edo, Idosin, Opsantai, Hora, oh, uh, and, and so it's all from this. Does it also have entries in the other form that point to this one? I mean, so if, if you looked up one of the other forms in this concordance. In the concordance, yes. Uh, I'll look at Hora uh, okay. here. Okay, so, so in this concordance, if I looked up one of the others, it would point me to this entry maybe. No, you'd no. have to know that this is a lexical form. Okay. Uh, uh, but this is okay. uh, where you would find the different uh, roots and stems. So it is helpful depending on the tool. Now, which book is this? this? This is that. What you oh, the analytical. analytical. I can find it in that. Yeah. Yes. Uh, for yeah. instance, hurao. Um, hurao. So this book is really useful yeah. to have so, in combination yeah. with the others. Yeah. The, 
Hmm. Horao is a lexical form, present tense. Imperfect is uh, heoron. Future is opsomai. Uh, second aorist is adon. Damn. Perfect is heoraka. Now I have this, but if I yeah. remember it list. I don't remember it listing them that way. Is that the same lexicon? It does right? when yeah. you get to the lexical form. So when yeah. you look at the other ones, Dad, I think it just tells you like what the word yeah. is. This is, but you didn't then have to go to the entry for the lexical form of the word to see okay. everything else. About okay, it. I see that. Okay, so it's showing There's imperfect future middle aorist. So and that's uh, opsomai. We're going to learn that tonight. Second, uh, second, second aorist, adon. Perfect is heoraka. Oh. First, first aorist okay. passive is ophthane. First future passive is ophthesomai. Uh, see also adon. Wow. So okay. Uh, this is that's one of the really most. Cool. Uh, the weirdest of the, the verbs that we'll learn okay. and it's one of the most common too. <laughs> but well, you well, also you have that <laughs> you also have that information in your textbook here at the end. Thinking soy uh, and a star. <laughs> uh, and ear, right? All pretty irregular. Yeah. Right. Um Same with the, uh, look on page yeah, our language. Look on page uh, 458. Second oh, entry, horao, that's present tense, oh. opsomai, that's future tense, adon, that's first aorist. Where are you, are you, I'm sorry, where are you? Four, 458. Hora. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah. Oh, okay, yeah, yes. Oh, yeah, wow. So different. Oh, oh there's three different roots. It seems. That's right. I mean, I can recognize that there seems to be a common root between you know, Adon and Aoraka. Seem, is that the same root or uh, not? Just a minute. Now, there's a footnote. Yes. Uh, yeah, those are, footnote five tells you there is both a lengthening and an augment from Aura <laughs> to Aoraka. So that's the same root as the present indicative. Um. Yeah, I believe that's right. Okay. Yeah. Four fifty eight. Four fifty eight. Oh. This is the listing of all the verbs that occur fifty times or more in the New Testament. And that started where? I'm... Uh, page four forty nine. Oh, yeah. Four fifty. List before I couldn't find it. This, I was looking when I was studying this, going, "Where's that list?" <laughs> no, I marked up my book to. Uh, you have column headings. Yeah. Ah, here it is. To know starting on four fifty. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I had started putting in my column headings, but I hadn't gotten. <laughs> but anyway, so, uh, we okay, departed you. from we have what we were from doing, but I, I want you to know where this stuff is because you'll be needing it uh, more and more. So, the uh, yeah. the listing starting at. Page four fifty. Right, that's, that's a useful. good listing. Yes, um, it is. That is a good. That's actually now I'm thinking. I'm thinking as I'm reading this. What I really want to see is is all the verbs in their forms, all the but, paradigms but, of all the verbs. But well, yeah, and that's what that basically is. Uh, all the major ones. Yeah. And then, but I'd also like to organize them by there are group. He's teaching us the groupings of how they function. I don't know that his list is organized that way. Well, this it book, is it? this book is. This is his book called Morphology of Biblical oh, Greek. We really got to get that book. Yeah, this is another book you'll want to have at some point. Nance wrote that. That's very thorough, very well organized. It's got all those codes for the the different verbs, but not just verbs. It's got okay. nouns, adjectives, and so forth. I'm not sure I'm able to actually. Remember the vocabulary. I find myself having, you know, really difficulty keeping things in my head. Well, it is what it is. I, I want to understand too, the I rules. I do too, Dave. But and, I've had the advantage of doing it for 25 years. Yeah, you've been working. <laughs> uh, I'm, do, I'm starting to forget my English. Well, when you finish <laughs> this book, you get yourself a group together and teach them. Oh, my goodness. And then I you can start learning so. it. You know, Carl, what I am getting, though, I, that aside, uh, we can give it the text, but even if I, I had hoped to be able to read the Greek, I'm not sure I'm going to be able to do that ever. But I 
already understand the interlinear mm -hmm. in a, a whole new way. Right. You know, I mean, it helps me to know what the pieces are. Mm -hmm. And I'll, sometimes the words are wrong that they want to put there for it. And I recognize they're doing something weird. And I, I get enough right now to get a lot out of the interlinear. Mm -hmm. You know, it right? it's no longer just uh, scribbles. With Strong's definitions. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. That's all, that's all it was. I don't to need prior. Strong's anymore. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. You know where it helps me is even though I can't go in and read this, whenever I'm looking at the Spanish and the English translation side by side and I see uh, they don't <laughs> exactly like each other, and I go in then and see, okay, what, what did it say in the, in the original Greek? At least I can figure out, oh, okay. That was uh, nominative, uh, that was a yeah. masculine accusative singular. I see where he's going with that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. for the most part, the care throughout all of the translations in English that I've been looking at, the mm -hmm. care that's gone into this is amazing. Yeah. And, and I had, I read something just off chance this last week. Where someone was talking about Newton's second law, uh, you know, an object that is in motion tends to stay in motion. An object at rest tends to stay at rest until it is acted upon by an external force. That's a way of phrasing mm -hmm. it. And they, this article was explaining that actually the until is an um, is actually uh, to the extent. Actually, and I went then and found the original original Latin. And then I went and fed the Latin into a into a current translator, and I was shocked that online it translated. And then I started looking up every Latin word and doing my own rough at it, and I realized something very important, that that Latin translator on Google, you know, I found, is a much closer to the actual original Latin words, just fixed the order a bit, than the translation done by the, the 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 guy right after newton died someone translated it into english and and the man spoke latin and english he, he i mean he he was a scholar the reason that it was written in latin was because it was the language of the scholars Scholar, right. newton spoke english i'm sorry yeah i'm sorry but what the amazing thing to me was that the care wasn't given to that translation that we've seen in our scriptures and and it turns out, you know, it was actually uh, to the uh, um, it, the words there are um, are something to the effect of except to the extent. And looking at this and trying to trying to understand what Newton was saying, what I realized was is that the others who are studying Newton translated it into English, and I even looked up the French. Uh, someone had translated into French, and I looked at that translated into English. And in and, and, and the French and the English contemporaries who translated it did their best to describe it in their understanding of what Newton was saying, okay. which is so different than what we've seen in the Bible. People have been so careful, for the most part, mm -hmm. to try to really be faithful to the language and the intention without putting their own understanding too much into it. I mean, it's really amazing compared to most other translations. Well, possibly that's due to the care. The care is due to the fact of the reverence that, yeah, people, that yeah, Christians yeah. have for the scriptures. Yeah. And we're not talking about, I mean, you don't want to be careless with scripture that affects the eternal uh, destiny of somebody. I mean, it goes back to what's the definition of God? I mean, unfortunately, most people in our society don't grasp what it means to be God and to be a creature yeah. of God. Yeah. But if you understand properly who and what God is, then you you would have that fear that mm. would drive you to that level mm -hmm. of care in yeah. translation yeah. of something that purports to be his word. That's been a core element of the Christian community since the very beginning of the Christian yeah. community. Yeah. I mean, Rightly so. That and that, exactly. The reason we use books rather than scrolls maybe because of christian scribes they were the first ones that started using them everywhere the lexicon like began because they were trying to mm -hmm. very carefully yeah. copy scriptures <laughs> but no. Yeah. anyway mean, 
Sorry, that was a long okay. insight. Uh, 20.4, is that where we are? Sure. Do you want someone else to read? Yeah. Like, yeah. Uh, somebody else want to read? Sorry, the codex. Codex, yeah. Where are we at? I'm sorry. 20.4. 4.4. Okay, I can do that. Some verbs use more than one root in the formation of their different tense stems. For example, horao mm -hmm. is from the root hora. Mm -hmm. Its future is opthamai. Opsamai. Op, sorry. Oh. <laughs> Wrong constant. Yeah, the <laughs> triton. Opsamai, which is from the root op. When the sigma is added, the P sigma is written as C. Um, opsami is not irregular. It is perfectly regular. If you understand, it is from a different root. <laughs> there are only nine verbs in the New Testament that do this. The first three are listed below. <laughs> Six more to go. <laughs> By the way, most of these words are quite common. <laughs> The ones that he lists are irk <laughs> as the root becomes irkamai. <laughs> its future is eluth becomes elusamai. I will come. Present leg lego. I say future er <laughs> uro. I will say present hora horao. I see future op. Opsamai, I will see. These words are easy to parse because you must simply memorize both roots. Yeah. You may want to create a separate vocabulary card <laughs> for each root. Yeah. Okay. And this book will show you all the other ones that he talks about V8 and MBG. This is MBG. Okay. okay. All right, should I pick up? Sorry. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, technically, liquid futures are part of pattern four. However, all Greek teachers want their students to learn how liquid features are formed. And some teachers may not feel the same way about pattern four, so I decided to keep them separate. Liquid verbs, for the most part, are formed regularly. However, they use a slightly different tense formative. And the present and future tense stems are often slightly different. The consonants... Lambda, mu, nu, and rho are called liquids because the air flows around the tongue. Lambda or rho. Or the sound goes through the nose. Mu or nu. When producing the letter, when producing the letter, sorry. If the last letter of the verbal root is a liquid, that verb is classified as a liquid verb. You've got a couple footnotes here. Technically, only lambda and rho are liquids. Mu and nu are called nasals. But because liquids and nasals often behave in the same manner, they are usually grouped together under the one heading of liquid. Footnote four. Not all verbs whose present tense stems ends in a liquid are liquids. It depends upon whether or not that liquid consonant is actually part of the root. Some verbs add a liquid consonant to the root to form a present hmm. stem, the present stem. This type of verb cannot have a liquid future since the future stem does not end in a liquid. The only way really to know with whether a verb will be a liquid future is to look it up in the lexicon and memorize it. And, and here's the, mm -hmm. the liquids okay. and the future tense stem. Carl has provided us our yeah, so lexicon. <laughs> the, the liquids, we're going to do weird things with the liquids. Yeah. But, uh, not weird, but... but it, it's uh, because it's a different tense formative. It's, it, you'll see that so in these cases okay yes yeah, so we can we'll look at some paradigms in but, but 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 also we do things to the consonants because that they the, the the rules with these consonants am i missing this I, uh what you do well, we're gonna get we're gonna further. get to it let's the, read a little yeah, let's read further but yeah. I, my, I have a question that a hold hold that. your question please all right yeah don't forget it all right <laughs> Overview chart, future active indicative, liquid. Future active tense stem plus the tense formative. And that tense formative is now epsilon sigma, not just sigma. That's the difference. Okay. Connecting vowel, omicron, or epsilon. Primary active personal ending. 
So that would be uh, men would be our tense stem. Mm -hmm. S or epsilon sigma would be the tense formative, right. followed by omicron being the connecting vowel. And finally, men or mu epsilon nu being the primary pers active personal ending to produce uh, men nu men. Mm -hmm. Which is some important. And don't don't, know, don't but... go any farther than that. Read the next mm -hmm. paragraph. Instead of adding a sigma as the tense formative, a liquid future adds epsilon sigma before the connecting vowel. Where are you? Um, right under the gray. Uh, we're on page two eleven. Oh, I jumped ahead. <clears throat> Instead of acting, adding. Sigma. Instead of adding a sigma as a tense formative, a liquid future adds epsilon sigma before the connecting vowel. However, this sigma will not stay because it is between two vowels or what is called intervocalic. It therefore drops out and the E in connecting vowel contract. Men plus epsilon sigma plus omicron plus men <laughs> becomes men new men. Mm -hmm. Remember our chart. I'm oh, sorry, menomen, which then becomes menu, meneo. Sorry, okay, I see. Meneomen, menumen. Remember that uh, chart in the back about contract, not con contractions. Um, it's back here somewhere. Vowel contractions, page 418. <clears throat> so you yes. have the, uh, the men is the root. S is the tense formative for the liquid future. The S sigma can't stay because it's between the epsilon and the omicron of the uh, connecting vowel. So when epsilon con contacts or contracts with omicron, look in the chart. Epsilon contracting with omicron becomes an oo. Yes. So that's why it's menumen right. instead of menomen. Right. So. He made a statement here, Carl, that I think maybe now makes sense to ask. It, okay. It, and he said, um, <clears throat> there are nine of these verbs. <clears throat> no, that's not the same thing. So the liquid, the liquid futures. So what we, so in, in, in the case where there's a stem that ends in one of these, consonants yeah we will have this rule uh, we'll have different um if they're future tense if they what isn't that what you're talking about well he's talking about hmm, how the future tense uh, so the future tense stem ends in a liquid consonant okay then we get this formative of epsilon, epsilon sig sigma. sigma instead that's of right. just sigma right that's right is that going to be always the case in the future tense for every that. liquid future yes okay if, if the okay if the yes. stem ends with a mu nu rho or lambda you'll have to add an epsilon sigma as a tense formative and then the sigma goes away and the epsilon and omicron or whatever vowels are that are touching then they contract according to the chart Yes, yes. So then he says in this footnote a couple of things. He says some some verbs add a liquid consonant to the root for the present stem. So if you're if you are in a present tense and you have this liquid consonant, you don't you don't do this whole thing. Let me th let me try to understand what he's saying. So in footnote four, yeah. Yeah, I see it. Some it's, verbs add a liquid consonant to the root to form the present. The present oh. stem instead of the future stem. I'm, I'm, 
Because we're talking about futures here. Yes. And he says a note about present. Is there something we need to know here? Um, yeah, let me find an example of it. I mean, uh, I think we've already seen ones that I don't know that we have. I'm not. So there's a different present tense stem. From the, the present tense stem is different from the root because it has a liquid. They've form. added a liquid. But concept. that doesn't mean you should expect the liquid future is what he's saying. That's what he's saying here. And I'm going, well, so what does that do to the present? Well, my I'm, I'm ah. trying to find an example of one of those verbs that be right. Add show the your chart. Uh, and I can't think of one right now. And it may not, maybe it's just anyway. Uh, I, you, can, you can let may it go. I take that question home and sure. try and to find it's, uh, it's okay. Quick, quick. Oh, no, I don't know. And well, then so, he, uh, Paul, um, oh. number 20, uh, or sorry, that's chapter 20. Okay, I'm looking at the first page. Apostello. Apostello. Um, because it ends with, it already has you? a liquid, I guess. So the that's stem a is, it oh, is a liquid verb. Uh, that's a <laughs> compound <laughs> verb. Apo is the preposition Pardon. prefix. Okay, never mind. But stel with two lambdas. That's kind of like balo. It has two lambdas yes. in the present tense stem, but it only has um, one lambda in the verbal root. Uh, I'm sorry, that's so, uh, not what we're looking for. Interesting. Okay. Um, the other thing he said right here in this footnote was the only way really to know whether a verb will be a liquid future is to look it up in the lexicon and memorize it. Mm -hmm. Um. So we can't look for the so we root can't, to end with a liquid just, concept? Yeah, not the root. The, the root. Well, the so, root. Yeah, it's oh, the root. I'm, here's one. And I'm like, this would mean that there's some that end this way in the future tense. This would seem to imply there are some things that have a root that ends this way that are not liquid. I, um, I don't know why he made that statement. I don't know, but here's here's an example of a liquid future, but the present temp, tense stem is a different from a different root. Well, okay. Uh, Lego. Yeah. Yes. Leg is yeah. the intense that, stem. That's what the future is it, her. That that really wasn't the sort of thing I was looking for, but okay. Yeah, that's okay. That's all right. Let's just go keep going. I, the statement he made is maybe saying that I'm teaching you a rule that's not universal. There'll be some that follow this. I'm, I think that may be what he's yeah. saying. Okay. Um this different way of forming the future does not affect the verb's meaning or its form. And here we've got an example, the paradigm of minnow. Uh, the first column is the liquid future. Meno, menes, mene, menumen, meneta, menusin. Uh, Oh, God. Yeah. I, you, he, we, you, they will remain. Now, he's got a third column there just oh. for comparison. It's a present contract, which does the same sort of thing as the liquid future does. Um, it's not the same verb, though. It, no. It's just giving us an example. An example, yeah, for but comparison. The, say. But when he says present liquid. No, it's a present Oh, he's uh, got the column and he calls yeah. it present liquid. Present, yeah, it's, it's not a, liquid, right? No. Okay. It, it's a liquid verb, but it's, it's, but a it's present, the present tense. tense of the liquid verb. Thank it's you. only the future it's liquid. that. Um, okay. It's yeah. the present tense of that liquid verb. That's right. So when he said prime, okay, back on the chart, he said primary active personal ending. Yes. So, oh, I see. Okay, that's the same. Okay, with most present and future tense, that is it's the same personal endings, but we were learning that yeah. there was that sigma tense formative, and yeah. now we're dealing with the situation with the epsilon sigma plus the uh, omicron or the epsilon, and it's contracting in this funny way. Yes. And so the result is that our future liquid and the present tense of the same liquid verb look actually very similar. 
That's right. But there's been some verbal contraction. Sorry, vowel contraction. He's going to yeah. get to the, okay. the main point of how to okay. use this information I think yeah. later on. We're going to get there. Well, so I don't want to get distracted to, to look beyond this in the um, in the next chapter, but this will help you a little bit right now, I think, if you look on page 230. This is chapter 21, where he introduces the imperfect tense. And this is where we're going to get the secondary tenses. Right now, we've got the primary tenses, the two, uh, the northwest and southwest corners of this chart. And the oh, northwest. So talking about ten well, endings, upper left and lower left. Okay. Of this quadrant, those are the primary tenses. Okay. Upper left is active voice. Mm -hmm. uh, lower left is middle passive voice. That much we've gotten so far. Mm -hmm. But we're going to start getting the secondary tenses in chapter twenty-one. Oh. And this is a very handy chart, and this is probably one of the things that you ought to memorize. I see. That's why he used the phrase primary active personal ending. Right. Because that is to say the top left quadrant of this chart. Mm -hmm. And um, we've also learned. It's not the middle or passive voice endings. Right. It's the active endings right. or primary okay. tenses. Okay. Primary. I didn't even know why the word primary was there. Now yeah. I see. Okay. There's some distinction. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. So just a um, couple of points here about this paradigm. Uh, the endings look very similar to the present tense that we've learned for luo, for instance. The only difference is in uh, the plural, where you've got contracting vowels that uh, are a little different. Instead of luo men, uh, it's menu men. Instead of lueta, it's luet uh, meneta. Instead of luusin. Well, Ooh, that's the same. Where are we? Where well, are I'm, I'm talking. Where are you at? I'm, oh, you're talking I'm through the, the talking chart. Through this. Uh, which, which, where are you? I'm not Okay, the paradigm back in 20.9. Okay. 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 I'm talking through some, just a comparison. Okay. Um, we started off in present tense by learning the paradigm for luo. Yeah. It's luo, lues, lue. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, that's very similar to this verb yes. in the uh, liquid future. It's meno, menes, mene. Uh, one difference is the accent is on the ultima. And it's a circumflex okay. accent. But the other difference in this paradigm compared to the Luo paradigm is in the uh, plural, first and second person plural, where you have contraction occurring. That's I'm, yeah. Um, with luo, uh, it's in the first plural. It's luo men. Um, but with meno, it's menu men, not amen. And that's because of the contraction that occurred. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, with yeah. the second plural, luo has. Uh, Luita, meno has meneta because of contraction. I'm just comparing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then third plural is pretty much the same with luo. It's luo men, excuse me, luusi or luusin compared to menusi or menusi. But the accent is different. The accent will be over the contracted syllable. And it's going to be a circumflex accent, whereas Luo had a, an acute accent. Those, are the that, differences. those differences would help us to distinguish present from future mm -hmm. tense right. with such a verb, mm -hmm. right? Because right. otherwise, person because it's meneta versus meneta. Mm -hmm. And yeah. menomen versus menumen. And the accent being on the last syllable, the ultima, is another difference. Ah, so, so like meneta, meneta. Mm -hmm. 
menomen, menumen. Yeah. Okay. So we had in the other verbs, we had a sigma instead of an epsilon sigma, right? That's right, for the tense formative. For and, and then yes. looking, looking, for example, at third person plural. So, because that's the example they gave, right? Yeah. Uh, and then I'm looking at the paradigm for, for Luo. And, and we have, it, it is in the future third person plural. Lususin. And um, all right. I see why he compares it with the contract verb. Yeah, because it's it's like it's like identical to a yeah. contract verb. Yeah, for the which present. is why he says you might mix it up with contract verbs. I yeah, guess for present example, tense contract verb. Right, because then it, when we get to the other yeah. tenses, I guess this will be somewhat different. But, yeah. Uh. Okay, some in, and it's now Newman. Yeah, we're just looking at. I'm just. It takes a, a bit of digestion to kind of yeah, like understand what this is doing and how to recognize it. So those accents mostly tell us what we're looking at. So they look more like the present tense than they do the future tense with these others. Yes, the present tense of a contract verb. Yes, okay. Yes. This is yes. on compared to that. Sure. Okay. But yeah, this no, is I, I present. This is future. No, that's present. Okay. This okay. is future here. And and they look a great deal like the present sense of a contract verb. Yes. And how do you tell the difference? He's going to talk about that a little later, right? But it looks identical to the to the ending of a contract it does. verb. It does, yeah. And that I think that's one of the takeaways. It looks identical to the ending of a contract verb. Mm -hmm. And and from what we're used to looking at present tense versus future tense, we're not going because the other verbs we've learned, the future tense tends to end a, in a, with a sigma there, and we won't see the sigma. Right, because right? it drops it out. Drops because, out. Because it, because so it doesn't falls. look like future tense. Yeah. I'm in. Okay, thank you. Okay, right. going on then 20.10. Are you with us, Ray? Okay, actually, no, I am totally lost tonight, but keep going. I okay, can't check it as best I can. Are we not helpful? I'm sorry, I just missed too much of the uh, contract verb part. So, yeah, you know, I, all of the the context of comparing the differences in the contract verb to these, I don't have the frame of reference yeah. yet for that. So. Well, what might help you, Ray, is uh, go back to read that chapter when you have time. Yeah, so I know. I, that's but, what I've been thinking all night. But uh, also that chart in the back here about vowel contractions is very helpful. Um, on page 418 in, in the appendix. Um, that's a... I made a copy of that and stuck it in my. Uh... The future tense of a contract verb looks like what? It's not showing that here to us. Future of a contract. It still has the sigma in it, doesn't it? Uh, yes, but let so, me find that. Um, I was looking for that so, earlier. Ray, when you're looking on this this cheat sheet, which I like to use a lot, I like to kind of look at this yeah. and understand it because it's a nice condensed thing. Yeah. The other thing is the colors are easier to pick out on yeah. this than they are in this. That's true. So what I that my question related to this cheat sheet because when I'm looking at this, the, the thing in here that's really clear to pick out between future and present tense on these conjugations mm -hmm. is that the the sigma in the future tense, which is missing from the future tense. And with the contract verbs in this present tense, we got we got a um we got another vowel in there, right? And um it's that 
this one. Oh. So, so like the third person plural, right? We have here. Uh, so try try looking at at the present tense of this verb men men menus, menusai. Yeah. Um. Looks normal, right? That and yeah. on a contract verb, right? When you're looking at a contract verb, the principal thing you'll see is an extra is that that you that you have an accent here that wasn't there before. And you're looking at a contract verb present tense, uh, they're very similar, and you won't have. I mean, you'll, the fact that it's a contract verb, you can still pick it out by using by using the endings. You can still see it. Mm -hmm. Okay, right. If you're looking at that, if that third person plural is an example on that, that first column of present, indicative, accative, indicative. But with but when you go to the future tense, you have a sigma in front of the ending, right? Mm -hmm. With it, Luo. It, it's sigma omicron with Luo. It could be sigma other things, if I'm not incorrect. Like yeah, well, we have seen have some sigma. that have well, we've seen some future tense, and I can't think where it's a sigma and there's another vowel there maybe but I'm, the sigma is a constant thing in front of that well, future tense yeah but not with these these liquids don't have the sigma that's right they're missing it it got dropped out it got because, dropped out yeah and so when you look at these liquids they look like present tense to us that's what that's really what is happening here and and in fact they have the very same form as the present contract verbs they look exactly the same I think what I'm going to do for next week is make another uh, Did that handout uh, of uh, several different because paradigms. You didn't, you didn't look at the contract verbs, but they're not that much different. You would have reckoned. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, oh, it has contract verbs over here, but if you'll use the main indicative chart here, you, you wouldn't have problem recognizing the tense of a contract verb without knowing it's a contract verb, you could still recognize the mm -hmm. tense. You might have to do some work to find its lexical form. Mm -hmm. But now we're coming across one where it's not enough to look at the chart. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, There's something helpful here for contract verbs in back in chapter 19, uh, page 202, uh, under 1917. Uh, he gives the three contract verbs, the alpha, epsilon, and omicron contract right. with the tense formative sigma and the ending. But then the resultant uh, future form has a lengthened connecting vowel. And 202? Uh, page 202, under 19.17, you see it starts... Such is oh, yes. the case with the future tense. Like those three lines there. Yeah, those three lines. That's examples of a contract future. And you can see the tense formative sigma there. That doesn't happen with liquid vowels because the sigma drops out. Because the epsilon sigma is the tense formative. It adds, it adds a vowel that's... Sigma drops out and the vowels contract. So, okay. Yeah. So what happened in the contract is that you still had the sigma omega, but it changed what was in front of the sigma. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it, it's it's not changing the what's after the sigma. So it's not changing the ending. It's right. changing the, what do you call that? Okay. The contract vowel? Yeah, the last vowel. The connecting vowel. The connecting vowel, thank yeah. you. Changing the connecting vowel, but not the ending. So you still recognize it pretty easily. Mm -hmm. These liquids, now the connecting vowel went away. Yeah. I mean, not the connecting vowel, the, the first letter of the of the ending. That What's the thing called? The connector, not a vowel. What's he call that thing? Oh, the, the ending? He calls it the tense formative, he calls it. Oh, tense formative, yeah. The tense formative change. Sigma for the contract verbs, but epsilon sigma for the liquid right. verbs. Right. Okay.
All right. Well, uh, yeah. well we, uh, okay, we were on page 211. I think yeah. we finished that. Uh, 20.10. Now we're talking about future middle indicative with a liquid verb. Uh, now he's not going to talk about middle slash passive here because uh, we're not going to get the passive form of the middle until a later chapter. They're, the middle and passive are not the same in, this, in the future tense, whereas in the present tense they were. Do you remember we... Uh -huh. uh, yeah. Yes, right. Yes. But there will be a separate form for the future passive. Okay. So he's just talking about middle voice now. Uh, and it's pretty much the same idea. You have the same tense formative epsilon sigma, and you have the phenomenon of the sigma dropping out because it's intervocalic and the contraction occurring between the epsilon, which is left from the tense formative and the vowel from the uh, connecting vowel, and they contract. And you have the same type of contraction all the way through. Uh, so menumai, mene, menetai, menumatha, menesa, and menuntai. One thing to notice with the middle voice, you've got a circumflex accent over the uh, syllable where there was contraction. With one exception, um, the first person plural. It's not a circumflex, it's an acute. Okay. And the reason for that is that the circumflex is only allowed to occur in the last two syllables. It cannot occur <laughs> in the third last syllable. So that's okay. why it's an acute. But it still has... But it's... Still an, still an accented still an syllable. Accent. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, Does it make sense to you? Yeah. Just thinking. It's, in, it's, 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 in, it's informational. But the thing that, that's still the challenge for us, for me looking at, when I'm looking at this, is to recognize its future and not mm -hmm. present, right? Yeah. Uh, I think it'll help us to have examples of the paradigms for yeah. the contract, the, the non-contract like Luo, the contract like uh, um, Agapao, and the liquid like Meno. I'll do those paradigms for both cool. present and future tenses. The fact that uh, let me ask this crazy question. I, one thing I do see here, and it's probably going to be a matter of just learning the words. This this one, clearly, when I'm looking at the inflected form, I do see an ending, and I see that it ends in a liquid, in a liquid mm -hmm. consonant. The liquid consonant is still there. It, yeah. That's, that's and good. I can see that. Mm -hmm. And... Um, that should clue me in, right? Is that should, yeah. is that the thing I should be looking for? Mm -hmm. Because in all of these, with the with the, comparing it to the contract vowels, they didn't they didn't end in in a consonant. They didn't end in a the contract verbs ended in a in, in, a, vowel. in a vowel. Yeah. So there isn't this there isn't this. Um, there might be some that looks the same. I don't know, but there, generally, what I'm looking for then to make the difference is I'm looking for one of those liquid consonants right, right before the ending yeah so you and, need to memorize the stem yeah mm -hmm. and then when i see that i'm looking and i should say it's an alert this tense is missing it's got a consonant there that's not sigma yeah it's probably dropped the sigma and then yeah i mean that would be a clue when you're just looking at it right yeah. a way of all right okay uh 20.12 Present epsilon contracts, we've already talked about this. The future liquid verb, future of a liquid verb looks just like the present tense epsilon contract verbs, including the accent. How will you tell them apart? 
for example, let's say you see menace, is it a present epsilon contract or is it a liquid future? Okay. You will have memorized the lexical form as meno. There is no such word as meneo. Mm -hmm. Right. If it were meneo, it would be a contract. Yes. And the, the root would be mene. You will also notice that the final stem consonant is a liquid, men, and therefore menace is a liquid future. Which is why they do the thing with the lexical. That's why they make that uh, that um, synthetic word. Yeah, meneo. Yeah. Well, not, right. It's, that's why the that's why the lexical me, form of, of agapa is yeah. agapao, not agapo. Right. Yeah. Because it's not. Thank you. You got. Because otherwise, right. they would make you think that the stem was agap. Agap. Yeah. But it's agapa. And if it was a gop, then it would be liquid. Well, no, that's not no, that's with that example, but yeah, but all right, yeah, 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 weird. All right, okay. <laughs> accent yes. the accent can also be helpful in identifying a liquid verb, but not in distinguish it from an epsilon contract. Uh, a liquid future is always has a circumflex over the contracted vowels. For example, menumen, except in the first person plural middle, menumatha, because a circumflex, and I'm saying this now, because a circumflex cannot stand over the antepenult, which is the third last syllable. You remember the names of those three last syllables? You've got the ultima, right. which is the last. Right. The You've got the penult, which is the second last. The antepenult is third last. And the rule is said the circumflex can only stand over the last two syllables. An acute can stand over any one of the last three syllables. And a grav can only stand over the last syllable. Hmm. 20 point, a lot of rules, right? <laughs> hmm. Present and liquid futures. Hmm. Present and future liquids. <laughs> when comparing the present and future forms of a liquid, notice the differences. See the two columns in 20.15. Um, the accents are different. Meno is present tense. Meno, future liquid. Menumai, present middle. Menumai is future middle of the liquids. There's no contraction in the present tense, menomen and menumen. Hmm. Okay. So, yes, I mean, it's small, but yeah. yeah. Right, right. There's no, there's no contraction. <laughs> Therefore, you don't have the ooh. You just have the amen. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then 20.15, stem changes. Along with the different tense formative, the future tense stem of a liquid verb is often different from its present tense stem for various reasons. Here are the liquid verbs you already know and those you will learn in this chapter. Uh, three examples of a double consonant, apostel, uh, that's the root, the present tense stem, stem has two lambdas, apostello, and the future of that liquid verb is apostello. It uses the, the root, not the present tense stem. Similar thing with bal with one lambda and balo, two lambdas. Uh, the bal with one lambda is the root which is different mm -hmm. from the present tense stem with two lambdas. And the future uses the root, not the present tense stem. And ek balo is just a compound of balo. Okay. We seem to be learning multiple things. So it's all mixed together. That would make it easier to d distinguish. I mean, for ones where they are different. 
right? Yeah. That makes it a little easier to to distinguish that present liquid from the future mm -hmm. liquid. So I, yeah, it's kind of like we're learning two different things simultaneously here. Yeah, there are different things. So one is the liquid. Yeah, mm -hmm. and the other is that some of these things have um, double 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 consonants in the present form, and it's a separate statement. Yeah, and also some of them have uh, iota inserted in the present form. Yeah, um, and some of them just have completely different roots in the present form. Yes. <laughs> is this something that only happens for 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 liquid? future vowel uh, verbs, or does this not happen in other cases, too? No, I think, uh, I mean, for that example of Ferrao that we talked about, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. that's not a... Uh, that's not a liquid. That's not a liquid. Right. But it has a different root for the f future than it does for okay. the present. So I'm not sure that this, this set of things he's showing us has much to do with the fact that it's liquid. It's just another fact. Yeah, it's just another fact. Okay. All right. Yeah. All right. He's introducing. Um, it's a he, it's he, a little bit hard to 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 you know I'm I'm trying to decipher really what he's teaching us here because it's kind of mixed together. It is. All right. All right. But it it has a bearing on, for instance, uh, the the two um, the three words that have uh, double consonant with. Lambda being that consonant, that is a liquid. It is a liquid. Yeah. So yes. it, it will be affected by. So it's, I mean, I guess it's really the point of what, what it's getting into here distinguishing between and understanding the importance of the difference between a verbal root and a verbal stem. Yeah, that's one thing we're learning. Yes. And, and that's what's consistent throughout all of it. Mm -hmm. Well, with. What he's saying here, the stem changes is yeah. So one thing is the liquid consonants. That's one thing that we learned about. Mm -hmm. Another thing he's teaching us here is that sometimes consonants get doubled in the present stem. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. There's some kind of alteration between the present yeah. and the stem and the. But and you don't have that's... to have that to have a liquid. He said no. that. Okay. He's There's two separate statements. That's all. Yeah. They're two different facts. And sometimes you have totally different roots. And sometimes you have an iota inserted. But the fact that it's liquid is not related to those other changes. Yeah. But, right. He just says they right. often happen with liquid verbs, yeah. is what he said. Well, this second okay. group here, the addition of the iota, these three are all liquid. Yeah. Verbs. I see that. Yeah. Are the the root is R, present tense stem is uh, I rho, uh, I, A, I, R, and the future is R rho. So, because it's liquid. Is, so he's considering Lego a liquid verb because of the different root er, which the, is the liquid. only one that's liquid is er. Leg, right. leg is not liquid. <laughs> and Understood. What I tried to indicate on this color chart I gave you, a uh, third of the way down on the second page, Lego, <laughs> uh, that's not liquid, but the liquid part is from the root er, er yeah. which <laughs> that's why it's only, right. That's the only green part. Where's that uh, in this page? Second page, part of the way down, Lego. Mm. Okay. It's only the root er that's liquid. Leg is not Leg. liquid. Lego. And, oh, I see you did that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, that that's interesting. You know, again, question here about the word root in the sense that we're using it in the I and I mentioned the others that you've grown up with being taught in vocabulary that the root is a basic piece of the word of a word that then has a common meaning across different forms, like mm. um, maybe 
I'm just going to use one that stuck in my mind because it came up at work today. Head. Um, because we, we encountered a license we'd never heard of before uh, that was called something on the order of pedo orthotic or something like that, which was a uh, someone who did, who did um, oh. orthopedic work on feet. Okay. And then, you know, from that same pen, and we finally realized the pen was a root that meant having to do with the feet, like mm -hmm. pedestrian, yeah. pedal, mm -hmm. um, so. And, and so forth. And so when we, when he's talking about root here for roots of these verbs, is he, no. is this a totally different sort of uh, meaning to root than we're accustomed to in other uses? Yeah. Or is uh, it the same? I think it's the same, but with with what we're learning now, some verbs do have different roots. They look quite a bit different. We have that sort of thing in English, too. Like uh, Dave was telling us about the verb go. Uh, present tense, uh, go, is quite different from the past tense, went. Yeah. And uh, the, the part of past participle, form is gone, which looks a lot like go. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's not not only Greek that has different Right, words. and then I know so, there's those irregular, well, we refer to it as irregular. Yeah. Right? yeah. But so, what is different, though, just a second, Dave. Yeah. What is different? He's making a distinction between root and stem. Right, and that's why they made, that's what prompted me to wonder is the the use of the root here different than root in other languages? I don't know. I've no. never not encountered that in English grammar, but root is more basic than stem. It, it seems that he's making a very narrow statement about what root, the way he's using it right, right. now, has to do with precisely the, the, the letters. Mm -hmm. not, yeah. he's, not, he's not necessarily talking about meaning, although in this case for this verb, if it has... If it contains the root and the tenses, clearly they are related, but right. he's really narrowing this down to right. the form of the verb. Right. And see, that's why another thing, why I'm wondering is this, do I have to think of his use of root here differently than I yeah. traditionally think of? Uh, yeah, use of the I word think so. As, yeah. I, another good example is like, you know, when you're going through, say, Strong's concordance, and you come across some word a lot of times, especially in Hebrew, and it all go from an archaic root yeah. and and then it just means it's so old nobody knows exactly where it came from okay but you can find nouns verbs adverbs adjectives but, prepositions all based on that but, but in etymology but that's when you talk about a root of a word in etymology it may not it may not have the same letters in it even i mean so like your example of pad in English is something that's con that's current in us and we can recognize, right. but that's not always the way meaning, meanings follow. True. But Well, here's something that's, I think, related to both of what you In English, we've, we've drawn words from so many different languages. Right. Predominantly Greek and, he and uh, Latin. Those are the main well, ones. German. Actually, we're, we're actually many words language. too. But I'll call it it's, it's, we're really German and French principally, right? And then it, we brought well, in words from right. a lot that, of places. Okay, one example. <laughs> one example is that causes confusion in English is the word holy and sanctify. Right. Mm -hmm. Holy is a noun. Sanctification is also a noun. Uh, holiness, uh, sanctify. Uh, those are all from, and in the Greek language, th they all have the same root. But in English, they have two different roots. Mm -hmm. uh, and it causes a lot of confusion, I think, when people don't recognize the fact that uh, sanctification and holiness are the same word, the same concept. Right. Uh, but that's, and I believe in Greek language, the words that have different roots that look a lot different come from different sources, that they're merged together. Uh, mm -hmm. 
oh, over time that that has happened. I don't know, maybe that just confuses things, but we have similarities in English to, to these concepts. Right, yeah, I was just trying to figure out if, if I need to understand Mounts' terminology differently than I traditionally understood that particular term. Well, this, this is the first time I've encountered a distinction between root and stem in, in Mounts' uh, book. Oh, so the earlier editions didn't do this? Oh, yeah, the earlier editions did, but before I studied... Um, Greek with mounts, I didn't know the distinction. Oh, okay. I, I learned uh, using a different grammar uh, from Machen, and he he didn't mention he didn't any make that distinction. No. Oh. I thought this was sort of standard up until well, you just mentioned It is that. becoming standard now, but mm -hmm. even now, compare, I started with Mounts' second edition and then third edition and now fourth and he has introduced some different concepts uh, and we've already talked about some of those he's uh, continuing to you know grow in his own yeah he is i think we've probably come to the end of our useful time tonight um we're past carl uh, I think it would be helpful to read 20.16 in, uh, so? in, in light of this question. Okay, well, go ahead and read it for sure. us. Sure. Uh, in the skipping ahead, there's some things we missed, but 20.16 20. says this, hint, it is often said that consonants carry the meaning of a word, not the vowels. If mm -hmm. you can think of a verb primarily in terms of its consonants, then the vocalic changes will not be a major problem. For example... In this chapter, you will learn the verb gnosko, gnosko which is from the root gno. It becomes gnoso, gnoso mai in the future. If you recognize that the consonants carry the word gno, you, well, you can still see them in gnosko, in gnos, gnoso mai. Mm -hmm. um, I, I don't know if that... That, that, I thought that was actually a very helpful insight. Yeah, I thought is, that really helps. I've definitely seen that same thing because, like, for instance, um, if you're looking into any stuff written by archaeologists about texts, the ancient texts that they discovered mm -hmm. and trying to figure them out, they will typically, as they're comparing Concepts. what may be the same word language to language to language as, as the, the word gets move between different cultures this has happened the in english yeah. typically that stay the same yeah. or extremely similar and not so much the vowels this has happened in in the changes in english too yeah, yeah. well the mm -hmm. the word no k-n-o-w comes yeah. from this same stem oh, does right the the gamma got changed to k in english mm -hmm. oh that's why we have the silent k there yeah mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah mm. okay Thanks, Carl. All right. Well, it's a good time, a good place to stop, I think. Um, we've covered the most important stuff in this chapter. Um, I don't want to rush through this chapter because we're, we've are we got new concepts that are, um, if we rush, we might uh, add a confusion. Sure. Yeah. Um, 10 minutes to nine. So we're going to leave this. What are you going to do? What do you want us to do next week? Well, you can read ahead to the through the rest of the chapter and look at vocabulary. I can, I can read that. You put that? I said, or in my case, I can go back and read. Yeah. I would suggest learning uh, the vocabulary here because we've got the liquid futures and possibly go back and review vocabulary in chapter 19. That would be probably enough of an assignment. Okay. And we'll pick up next week. Um, wow. Is that okay? Yeah, no, it's good. Mm -hmm. cool. And for myself, I am going to uh, give you another handout with the, uh, the paradigms that I mentioned, which I think having them on one sheet side by side will help us to, to learn these 
differences between the contract verb and the liquid verb. That's not these. Well, yeah, but that is, that's handwritten stuff. It's directly from the paradigms that he okay. uh, introduced in each of those chapters. But I want to get more of the paradigm okay. and put them all on one sheet. I think it would help me to, and, to learn them better. All right. Sorry that we didn't get further tonight, but no, we're... I think we're starting to. What we were talking about earlier is Dave mentioned it, and I think the rest of you chipped in. We're getting to the point now in our understanding of Greek where uh, we're seeing concepts in a new light and uh, understanding the language a little, a little better. It's going to keep getting more and more clear like that. If, if we can keep from getting you discouraged and. Uh, <laughs> well, thank you. Appreciate your concern for us. You sure are taking a lot of notes, Zach. I'm trying to. <laughs> That's how it stays in my brain the best. Good for you. Mm. All right. Well, would one of the three of you like to close us in prayer? Father, thank you, Lord, for allowing us all to be back together again. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Lord, especially for Carl and giving him the motivation to be here to study this and to impart it to others. Help us, Lord, to be able to understand clearly what you have done here, not so we can feel great about it, but so that we can be more confident that we understand more precisely, more correctly what it is you're trying to tell us. And help us, Lord, to be able to use it, not just in order to understand it intellectually, but to be able to share it with others and to make a difference in how we live and how we teach others. So thank you that we don't have to do this on our own, but that we have your Holy Spirit to help us do it. And for that, we all give you the thanks and the praise, and I pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Stop the recording. Goodbye, everybody.